Hey everyone, this is Adam and today I'm going to be showing you how to embed custom web fonts into your HTML emails with custom web safe fallback fonts using the Emailify Figma plugin. So to get started, all we need to do is go to our Figma file, click on the little resources icon up here. And if you click on that and search for Emailify, so that's E-M-A-I-L-I-F-Y. And then under the plugins tab, if you click on the Emailify result, you can run the plugin by either clicking on this run button here, or I'd recommend clicking on this little save icon here, which will save it to your plugins list for later. So I've already clicked on the save icon. So I'm just gonna go to my canvas, right click anywhere, go down to plugins, go down to saved plugins, and then click on the Emailify item. And that's just gonna run the plugin we saved a second ago. So if you're new to the plugin, the way that it works is it helps you to design HTML emails in Figma, and then you can export those to production ready HTML with one click uh, later. So I'm gonna be showing you how to do that. I'm not gonna be going through all of the features. There's some other more in-depth tutorials on the YouTube channel if you wanna get more into detail about how to design the emails. Today, I'm really just gonna be focusing much more on how to add custom web fonts and font fallbacks to your text layers inside of the email design. So to get started, I'm just gonna add a new template. So I'm just gonna call this template uh, example and add that to my Figma file. And this is a special type of frame that will allow you to add these Emailify components directly into your template. So I'm just gonna create a really, really simple template. I'm just gonna add some of these predefined components. I'm not gonna customize them too much. You can obviously go through and change these to your liking. So you can swap out content, images, colors, uh, styles, everything like that. Today, I'm just gonna be focusing mostly on the text and showing you how to embed custom fonts and web safe fallback fonts as well. So I'm just gonna add a few of these components here. So I'll just add a couple more just to show you a few different font examples. So there we go. I'll just add those in for now. Maybe add one more split block just so we've got a bit of variation there and we can apply some different fonts. Okay, cool. So that's what the template's currently looking like. And if we go to our preview tab, so just click on the preview button, this will load up a live HTML preview of your email. So you can see it directly in the plugin there. It's rendering as we'd expect. And so you can see here, we've got the font set to the default Figma font, which is just inter. So we've got inter set on all of these layers, but we wanna add some different fonts. So if we go to our web browser here, uh, I've got this website loaded up called cdnfonts.com. And this has a bunch of different fonts. Uh, I think there's like 20,000 fonts on this site. And I've already downloaded and installed these two. So I've got this Echelon font and this Blind Sands font. So I'm just gonna apply those in Figma by going to my text layer. And if I search for that uh, font, so we've got this Echelon font there, I can select that one and adjust that size if I want to. So I can bump that up because the font's a little bit smaller. And I've also got this other font, Spline Sans Mono. So this is a mono spaced font. So I'm gonna apply that to this layer here. So if we search for that one, we've got this new font, Spline Sans Mono. So I'm gonna select that and we can apply that to a couple of these other layers as well. We can apply it to our content layers too. So I'll just apply that one there and show you what that looks like. The other thing I'm gonna do is also apply a web safe font to show you what that looks like. So for example, a web safe font would be something like Arial. So we'll just select Arial and I'll show you why I'm selecting that in a second, just so we can compare these three different types of fonts. Okay, so now that we've got those new fonts added, I'm just gonna refresh my preview again. And you can see here, because I've got my uh, custom font selected, those are now rendering in the email. So we've got these fonts here and those are showing up because I've got them installed on my computer. So obviously because we can select them in Figma, that means these are already installed at a system level. But when we send out the email, the users of our emails aren't gonna have that font installed necessarily. Uh, it's a very low chance that they would. So what we wanna do is embed the font links or custom font URLs into the email so that when we send out the email, the clients that support custom emails will be able to see those fonts. So I'm gonna show you how to do that now. So if you go down to this little configure fonts button in the bottom of the preview window, so I'm just gonna click on that configure fonts button now. And you can see here that we've got a few different options. So we've got a list of our fonts. So you can see we've got our Echelon font, the Interfont, Spline Sans Mono, and Arial. So these are all the fonts that are being used in our current email. So those are automatically gonna get listed in this little window here. So what we can do is a couple of different things. The first thing that we can do is specify a fallback font. So a fallback font is gonna appear 
if the email client that the user is uh, reading your email with doesn't support custom fonts. So this is a very important point. There's only a handful of clients that actually support custom web fonts in emails. So if you click on this little link here, that will take you to the Can I Email page uh, here, which will show you the support level for custom fonts. So you can see here, it's mostly Apple Mail. So Mac OS, iOS, the Apple Mail app. Gmail doesn't support them at all. Uh, Outlook really doesn't support them at all unless you're on Mac OS and then, then they will, but otherwise it doesn't really support them. Uh, and again, other random clients like Samsung email, Thunderbird, and a few other random email clients down here. But overall, the support is very low. So this is the reason why we want to uh, add fallback fonts. So in this case, we've got this Echelon font and it's kind of a bulky font. So what we want to do is select a web safe font that is close to that. And I know that we can change this uh, to different serif fonts here, but these are all fairly thin. So I'm going to select the impact font, which you can see a preview of here, which is somewhat closer to the custom font that we're using here. So I'm going to leave that one as impact. Then I'm going to go down here and for our inter font, which is a Google font, I'm just going to set the fallback for that one to Helvetica. Uh, you could also use Arial. Arial will be the default. So I'm just going to use Helvetica in this case. And you can see there's a little note here saying that Google font URLs are automatically embedded. So what that means is if you're using a font in Figma, that's part of the Google fonts range. So fonts.google.com uh, are all the Google fonts. Those will automatically be detected and the embed URLs will be included automatically. For our other custom font up here, we've got this Echelon font. What we need to do is actually populate this little input here with a link to the custom font file. As I mentioned before, because the users aren't gonna have the font installed, we need to embed that web font directly into the HTML itself. So the way we can do that is if we go back to our uh, cdnfonts.com page, and you can see here, it's got some links to the font. So I'm just gonna open up those links. You can see I've copied that URL here, and we're not gonna be copy pasting this content here. What we wanna do is open up the page that it's linking to, which is this one. And we wanna grab a link to the WOF file. So that's W-O-F-F -F is the font file. So I'm gonna highlight that link I'm just gonna copy it to my clipboard and I'm gonna go back to Figma and paste that in here. So where it's got the little link field, I'm gonna paste that in. And you can see we've now pasted in a link directly to the WAF font file. So this is the custom font file. So you wanna make sure that's the correct uh, font for the font that you're loading up here. And you can see down here, we've got another one for Spline Sans Mono. First of all, I'm just gonna set the fallback font to a mono spaced fallback font. So we've got some mono spaced fonts here. So if I select that, you can see that it's changing to a monospaced type font, which is much more similar to the monospaced custom font we're using. You can pick which one ever you feel suits best. I'm just gonna use Courier for this one. And again, we've got two different variants for this font. So we've got Spline Sans Mono Bold and Spline Sans Mono Regular. So if we go back to our uh, link here, we've got our Spline uh, Sans page. I'm just gonna copy paste that link again, open that up here. And what you wanna do is copy paste these fonts again. So I'm just gonna copy paste that uh, into here. And I'm just gonna make this one uh, italic. So this one will be italic. And I'm just gonna refresh that. So if you go back here and jump back in, I'm just gonna refresh this little configure fonts thing. And that will load up the mono italic font, which is actually the one that I wanna embed. So I've got the regular one, which is here. And then I've got the italic one here. So I'm gonna copy paste that into my italic uh, field. And now we're good to go. So you can see here, I've got my, again, just to recap, I've got my two custom fonts, which we have to specify the links to the file to. You might have this hosted on your own website. So if you've got a custom font uh, that isn't on a CDN, most of them are, uh, but if you're hosting your own, you'd paste your own WAF link into here. It might be a WAF or WAF2 file. And then you're obviously gonna set those font fallbacks. So you wanna do that for all of your custom fonts. And then at the bottom here, you'll notice that the Arial font is already a WebSafe font. So you'll remember that we set the Arial font on these layers. And because that's already a WebSafe font, we don't need to specify a fallback font or a custom embed link for those ones. So those are the three types. You've got WebSafe fonts, you've got totally custom fonts, and you've got custom Google fonts. So now that we've run through those, I'm gonna go back to my preview and close that off. This is gonna refresh the preview. And you can see here that uh, we've got this other toggle called show fallback fonts. 
So I'm going to toggle that show fallback fonts on. And what that does is it allows us to preview the email with the fallback fonts only. So you can see here that we've got our courier font, our impact font, and down here, we've also got the courier font uh, set. So what that's doing is it's essentially taking the fallback fonts that we specified uh, under these dropdowns, like these ones, and it's previewing the email, showing you what the email is gonna look like for an email client that doesn't support custom fonts. As we showed before, there's only a handful of clients that do support custom fonts. So for the majority of users, people on Gmail, people on most Outlook versions, this uh, show fallback fonts toggle enabled is actually what they're gonna end up seeing. So you wanna be really mindful about uh, how the email is gonna look to most of those users and treat the custom fonts as more of a progressive enhancement for the email clients that do actually support them. So it's very important to toggle that on to preview how the email is gonna look to a lot of your users, most of your users in fact, uh, depending on what use the devices they're using. And you wanna make sure those fallbacks are set to something that is gonna still look nice. So if they don't support the custom monospace font here, it will automatically fall back to courier. So that's what that looks like there. Um, the other thing to note is if that you did wanna make sure that the custom font is loaded, you would basically have to embed that into an image. So for example, if we took this text layer here and dropped it into an image layer, so if we drop that inside of an image itself, I'll just bump that down a little bit so we can actually see the content. And if you embed text into an image, that will obviously get included inside the image as part of the image. So if we refresh the design here uh, and have a look at that, you can see that the image itself has the custom font in it. So even with the fallback font toggle, obviously that's not gonna affect it because it's just purely an image. So if you really do need uh, a custom font guaranteed to render correctly, or visually correctly, then you might wanna consider using it as part of a design element inside of an image layer. So anyway, that's what that looks like there. And of course you can configure these to be uh, any kind of fallbacks you want. So if for some reason you wanted the uh, monospace font, custom font to actually just fall back to a very regular type of font, like a sans serif font, you can set that to be sans serif as well. And if we close that off and refresh that, you can see here we've just updated it. So without the fallback font enabled, if the custom font can be supported, you'll get the custom monospace font. Or if you don't have the support for custom fonts and we show those fallback fonts again, you can see that now it's reverting to Arial. So it's totally up to you. I would uh, keep it consistent and try to keep it in the same font family. So I, in this case, would set it to something like Courier and you can load it up like that and it'll be fairly close to the original font. So that's what that looks like. So yeah, that's basically it. I just wanted to run you through the different options that you have for uh, embedding custom fonts, setting fallback fonts, uh, which again is very important, being very, very mindful of the support level being quite low for custom fonts. So keeping them as more of a progressive enhancement. And when you're finished with your email design, just as a last step, if you close out of the preview and you wanna actually export the email, you can do that instantly by clicking on the export HTML button up here and selecting the platform. So you can either just download it to your computer as an HTML uh, zip file, or if you're using a marketing platform, you can select one of those here. If you're using something like Klaviyo, you can drop your API key in there and upload it. In this case, I'm just gonna do a really quick export to HTML. You can set your subject line and pre-edit here if you want. And I'm just gonna export it to HTML in this case generate that HTML, export the images, and then download the zip file to your computer. So if you click on that button and then just save that to your computer, I'm just gonna save it to my desktop. And if I unzip that file, open up the folder, you can see here that the HTML has been exported to this file here. So we can see what that looks like. If we open up the preview HTML file, this will just give us a nice little preview overview. Uh, this is good if you wanna send it to clients, it'll give you a desktop version and mobile view that you can preview in the browser. And we can see here that our custom fonts are being loaded in as we'd expect. So that's looking really nice. And then the actual email template itself is in this other index file here. So the real uh, template export is this index.html file inside of the nested folder in your zip file. So that's the raw HTML that's uh, gonna load up your content. So that's what your exported HTML looks like there. Again, you can't preview 
the fallback fonts now because we've already got the uh, custom fonts installed on our computer. But if you were to open this email uh, in your email client like Outlook or Gmail, you would see the fallback fonts that we previewed in our HTML preview over here. Uh, just with that toggle turned on in Gmail or Outlook, you would see these fonts instead of the custom fonts. So always be sure to test out the emails in those clients before you send it out. But yeah, this is what the fonts are gonna look like with the fallbacks enabled. So yeah, thank you for uh, walking through this tutorial. I hope that's been helpful. If you've been wondering how custom fonts work inside of HTML emails, it's a little bit more complicated than a website, for example, because of the support level being so varied as we looked at in the can I email list. But if you do wanna use the custom fonts as more of a progressive enhancement, for your email designs, then uh, you can now do that using this configure fonts option in the Emailify plugin uh, and set those fallback fonts as well. So that's gonna give you a little bit more design flexibility if you need to use your own uh, custom third-party web fonts for your own brand or design guidelines. Just make sure that you have that hosted somewhere and be sure to drop in that link into this field here. Otherwise the email uh, obviously won't load up that font. So yeah, thank you as always for watching and we'll be back with more Figma tutorials like this one very soon.